We'd like to end our show on a lighter note. An upcoming episode of NOVA's Nature Series will highlight the work of a UNM professor who studies hummingbirds in our area and abroad. Christopher Witt, thanks for stopping by this week. It's a pleasure to be here. You're the Curator of Birds and Associate Biology Professor at the University of New Mexico, and you're featured in the new season of Nature. It debuts next week on New Mexico PBS. Super hummingbirds, they follow a trip that you took to Peru where you examined how hummingbirds fly at high altitudes. Why were you interested in that as a researcher? Hummingbirds are at the extreme, and I think uh, it's human nature to try to understand the extremes of adaptation and physical abilities. And so we wanted to understand the limits of hummingbirds' physical abilities. And we think it could tell us something really fundamental about where species of hummingbirds are distributed and why there are so many species of hummingbirds. And hummingbirds can live at lots of different altitudes. Well, hummingbirds in general live at lots of different altitudes. But any specific species of hummingbirds usually has a, a specific altitude at which it lives. And that's true in the Peruvian Andes, where we have been doing our research for 10 years. This documentary is going to give you a window into that research uh, because they followed us to one of our, our favorite sites to study these Andean hummingbirds. And we also have been studying hummingbirds here in New Mexico. And even our New Mexico hummingbirds are partial to particular elevations. We'll get more to that in just a moment. What did you learn in Peru? What we learned is that the hummingbirds that occur in the lowlands along the coast of Peru, in the Amazon jungles of Peru, are very robust in that they can tolerate a pretty severe reduction in the level of oxygen in the air and they can still fly. And that's especially remarkable because they consume oxygen at very, very high rates, even when they're sitting, just because they're so small. And when they fly, they elevate that rate of oxygen consumption 10 or 15 fold. So they need a ton of oxygen. They, they're taking up oxygen at very high rates, the highest rate found in any vertebrate. The fact that they can continue to take up oxygen at those high rates, even when oxygen becomes scarce in the air around them, uh, means that they have um, an exceptional ability to fly high and to exercise very intensely. But the very exciting thing that we found is that as we started to climb the mountains, we found that um, at first, the hummingbirds at moderate elevations, like here in Albuquerque and uh, as high as 2,000 meters or uh, maybe about 8,000 feet, um, don't have any additional ability to fly high. They tolerate the same amount of oxygen reduction that the lowland hummingbirds tolerate. But then when we went very high in the Andes to these communities of hummingbirds around 4,000 meters elevation, so the same height as the peak of Mount Wheeler, there we found hummingbirds that were exceptionally robust. They could go far higher than the lowland hummingbirds. Uh, and that was evidence to us of their highly adapted respiratory systems. They just have a huge diffusion surface in their lungs for taking up oxygen. And they have specially adapted protein molecules, the, the hemoglobin molecule that's responsible for carrying oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body, uh, has changed in structure in those high altitude species so that they can grab oxygen even when oxygen molecules are very scarce. Let's take a look now at part of what you saw in Peru that's going to be featured in that sure. upcoming episode. Now, Chris's carefully designed test flights can begin. I think it's just human nature to be interested in the limits of performance. We want to know what's the most that a bird can do. What's the extreme in terms of flight? So this is the sparkling violet ear. Right now, the bird is sort of figuring out the confines of its new chamber, but it's going to spend most of its time on that brass perch. Oxygen forms about 21% of Earth's atmosphere. Bit by bit, Chris will reduce the percentage of oxygen in the chamber to simulate an increase in altitude. We're going to ratchet the oxygen down by infusing nitrogen. So we're at 13%. And the fact that it's hovering a lot is evidence that it's not having very much trouble. I would say it's nowhere near its limit. Now the test gets harder. There we go, 11%. The violet ear is asked to fly by temporarily removing her perch. I'm so darn impressed with her athleticism. It's now 7.5% oxygen. She's 
having trouble. That's an amazing feat right there. Bird did an amazing job producing lift. It's not until the gauge drops to 6% that she truly reaches her limit. That's an altitude equivalent of 43,000 feet, well above the cruising limit of a jumbo jet. But she still tries to fly. That's incredible. I can't believe she could do that. So Dr. Witt, what have you learned about hummingbirds in New Mexico or in our region? You talked a little bit earlier about different levels of elevation, but what are we, what are we curious about right now in our area? Well, we went to the Andes because there are so many species of hummingbirds there. It's the bird continent. Most of the 338 species of hummingbirds are in South America, and a good portion of those are in the Andes. Uh, but it turns out that the same mechanisms that are allowing high Andean hummingbirds to, to fly high also apply to our hummingbirds here in New Mexico. So we've got a much simpler hummingbird system here in New Mexico. There's only about four species that occur in northern New Mexico. And there's two that breed here that we see on a daily basis from about April to uh, early October. What are those? Those are the black chin hummingbird that are, that are here in the valley mostly. They breed along the bosque and all through town. And they get up to about 8,000 feet or a little bit more. And then there's the broad-tailed hummingbird, which is the hummingbird of the mountains that we all see when we go to the mountains in the summertime. And they come down as far as about Cedar Crest or the upper part of the foothills. Any dangers or threats to the hummingbird population in our area right now? Uh, well, most of the hummingbirds are, that we have here are abundant and they don't seem to be threatened and they're very adaptable. They adapt to uh, human environments very well, ornamental plantings and hummingbird feeders. So they're not immediately threatened with extinction. But we expect them to be as vulnerable as any other species to climate warming and uh, habitat conversion that could come with drying and forest fires and things like that. Uh, so we've got the black chin hummingbird down low and the broad-tailed hummingbird up high. And with warming, we might expect that the black chin hummingbirds would move upslope. And that's a concern for the broad-tailed hummingbirds because the broad-tailed hummingbirds are actually competitively subordinate to the black chin hummingbirds. So Maybe with warming, we might think the black chin hummingbirds would replace the broad-tailed hummingbirds. And some really interesting research by my um, master's student, Ariel Gaffney, has shown that the basis for that elevational replacement of species pro it probably has something to do with the partial pressure of oxygen. So it's about oxygen availability, not temperature. So maybe climate warming won't shake up those distributions. And that's consistent with what we found in the Andes where the birds are adapting at a genetic level in terms of their protein structure uh, for the protein that transports oxygen. And that is not directly tied to temperature, it's tied to atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure varies consistently with elevation and it's not expected to change with climate warming. That is the relationship between elevation and pressure should stay the same even while warmer temperatures creep up the mountains. That is fascinating. Thank you so much, and uh, folks can catch the premiere of the new season of Nature, which features super hummingbirds, on October 12th on New Mexico PBS, and you can go to newmexicopbs.org to see the full schedule and get more information. I'm Gene Grant. Thanks for joining us this week for New Mexico in Focus. As always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. We'll see you next week in Focus. This program is produced by New Mexico PBS for a presentation of Vision Maker Media with major funding provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Funding for New Mexico in Focus provided by the McCune Charitable Foundation and the Nalita E. Walker Fund for KNME-TV, the KNME-TV Endowment Fund, and viewers like you.